the station. Let's head out the south exit and see if we can find the park, shall we? Construction on this garden began in 1913 and was completed in 1916 by a landscape gardener called Sengoku who lived in Akasaka as a villa for Keijo Euchi, who became the vice president of the South Manchuria Railway later on. So it was bought and purchased and this and that. Uh, uses a villa for the uh, Iwasaki family until 1974 and the Tokyo Metropolitan Government then uh, received it and they've been looking at it after it ever since. Apparently, I was just talking to a couple Americans, I think they probably live here, uh, this park has a lot of underground rivers flowing through it with well water coming up, so that kind of makes it a little bit famous, natural springs. And yes, it actually says that here in the little bit that I'm reading. So there's a lot of water running off and everything like that. And uh, let's walk through and take a look. Listen to the semi, okay? Summer is nearing its end, so the semi are pretty loud about the cicada, but they're still here. Ooh, this is a nice park. Look at these trees. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm probably going to have to speak up a bit because the semi are always much louder than the human voice. It's strange. Here's a trellis that I'm sure will look, would look beautiful when everything is in bloom. Look at these vines above us. Let's follow it back. Looks like vines, but in actuality, it's a tree. Look at that. Not a yellow brick road, but let's follow it and see where it leads us, shall we? If we take a long shot, we can see how the trees are changing to a bamboo grove down near the bottom of the stairs. Don't you just love bamboo? I do. This stuff is gorgeous. Even the rock along the path here is gorgeous. I imagine in the old days this was one of the trails that people took to come through the park. It's closed off now, but that's good, otherwise it would wear down. It's so interesting. It reminds me of Hawaii, the big island, the volcanic rock. That's what it feels like. And here we've come to the pond in the center of the park. Very interesting because the little English piece of paper that provides us with information tells us that um, there's a depression that contains a natural spring that provides large quantities of flesh water. Yes, that's F-L-E-S-H water. So one might be a little bit concerned by that. It's interesting, I don't know if you can see, due to the, oh yes you can, to the reflection, but if you look deeper into the pond, you can see that a hexagonal shape has been cut out of the pond bed floor. Perhaps that is um, a where the spring water comes in or something, I'm not sure, but it's rather interesting. I always find it so interesting how when they design these ponds and things like that, they'll just put in a little bit of, see these rough mm, hexagonal, octagonal cut stone pillars right there and it gives you the feeling that maybe there was a bridge there once or something like that. It's very interesting. Let's cross over. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the sound of the cicada, the waterfall, and the helicopter flying overhead. Here's another example of the uh, huge stone that I was just mentioning on the other side of the pond. We can follow this water up to the source of the spring, which is right up there. And of course, because all sources are holy places. There's a little shrine here. Another natural source.
all the sweet little things you find in these serene parks around Japan. I just love the way Japanese trees have been sculpted to look like they're wild, blown by a strong wind against the rocky outcrop of the Japan Sea. And here we are at the end of our tour of another Serenity Park with a lot of mosquitoes. And I hope you enjoyed this tour as much as I did, listening to the sound of the sand, the sound of the traffic, the helicopters, the construction, the overhead highways, my voice, and all of that other kind of stuff. See you next time at the next Serenity video.